Hey guys, MD Gaming here with another explanation on the Japanese cruisers. This is the second variant that you can play and it focuses on long range and island hiding. For this one, we're gonna use Yamamoto for his base trade of AP damage. I use Norman Scott because again, accuracy is pretty key. And then Knusikov because he increases the main battery range. For his base traits, I'm gonna use Beyond Range for an extra 10%. I'm always going to try to start fire, so igniter. I'm going to also maximum movement speed. And then also for steering gear, along with uh, reduction of reload time. So let's jump into the game and let's show you kind of what's going to go on with the long range Japanese cruiser type. This type of play is going to focus more on shooting at longer range. That way, it kind of supplements the kiting of the maneuverability of the other build because now it takes longer for the rounds to reach you. I find this build a little more difficult than the Makawa build just because that kiting ability, even if you're closer range by probably one or two kilometers, is going to cause be a huge difference in, in how you play this ship. So with this one again like you're going to focus more on firing at distance along with using islands for cover you're not going to be able to use the torpedoes as much in this type of build just because if you're shooting the furthest distance even if the enemy is going to chase you those torpedoes might not be able to reach them in range depending on the battleship speed with that being said, you also have to remember that even at max range, there's many battleships out there that can still outrange you. So you don't have that range advantage over battleships to where you can rain fire on them without them even touching you. At the start of the game, it's always good to kind of assess who's going to be in your team. So I got the Z-23 Destroyer and the Atlantico on my side. So I know if the Z-23 pushes, in, even if he's in smoke, he can pop a radar, which will allow me to shoot so I don't have to push as strongly. And then I know the Atlantico has amazing secondaries. So if I can draw the fight into the Atlantico, then it's going to play a huge benefit to our team with destroying the enemy ships. Luckily, my team at ACAP have all decided to protect the A flank and we actually have the B cap, which is actually moving to the left of A cap also, which is very rare, I think, in Sleeping Giant. I feel like normally everyone kind of gravitates more towards C, but this is, this is going to be beneficial for us as a, as a team. So what you're looking for uh, as a Japanese cruiser, uh, Yamamoto, is again, like you're still going to get yourself in good angles. And then it just elongates your ability to keep firing while you're retreating or while you're trying to push the again like the fire. So the Al Jair is there. And this is this is the thing that you can do with Japanese cruises. This is how I play. So what I'm gonna do is I'm not ever gonna shoot where he's at. I wanna try to protect his escape route. Because if he does start to get hit as a Japanese cruiser, if you can sit down your computer and create a wall it's gonna prevent him from trying to escape. And so right now that wall right there is gonna, you're gonna see it's gonna force him not to be able to go uh, into A cap. And then also by me shooting AP at him, it's gonna force him to angle into me in order to avoid being broadside citadel. These two things create a strong advantage for my Z23 along with my Atlantico who has the amazing secondaries and strong guns to shoot the Azure here. But you can make the decision of what you kinda wanna do. This It's just mind game play that I feel like is really good with uh, Japanese cruisers because they have phenomenal HE and it's very scary for the enemy if you have AP shooting also. So we're able to get them out. As you can see, we have the Atlantica who pushed up on the other A side. So. A cap is clear. And this is what you gotta do as a Japanese cruiser. You gotta just assess the, the situation. So I'm the furthest out of everybody else, but I know that basically 
no one else is coming over the ACAP side because no one supported the, the, the French cruiser. So now I'm trying to push into ACAP. Trying to wait till target opens up so I can fire behind islands. And again, like that's where the Yamamoto build of this type of cruiser really shines. It's behind islands, you can see that arch over that island or mountain. And I'm able to shoot the Azuma at 16.8 distance, whereas in the Makawa build, I think I, I can only go up to 13 or 14. In this type of cruiser set setup again, you want to try to focus more on island hiding, which is going to restrict your ability to use torpedoes, but it is going to allow you to get a lot more fires down. So using the islands for cover against this Atlantico, I'm just going to try to set fires on the ship. And once I kind of set fires on the ship, you're going to see me trying to transition over to the next Atlantico. That way I can have dual fires. And really, that is, that's a good play. It's a hard play. But if you're ever any type of HE spamming cruiser, it would be good to set fire on one ship, go to the uh, go to the next ship, and start another fire. Rather than keep raining HE shells on the same ship, if you can attack two and you can get two permanent fires going, it's just going to do a lot more damage to the enemy ships than if you were just to solely focus on one ship. And the rounds for the Japanese cruisers have a very good arc. So depending on your distance, you can definitely get over an island. And that's really what you're going to try to focus on with the Yamamoto build, rather than trying to draw the enemy out with the Makawa build. It's just ensuring that you're behind the island, they're not seeing you, and you're lobbying rounds, starting fires, and just doing damage over time on the Atlantico. One crucial thing I know a lot of people talk about, but when you're shooting a ship and you're trying to start fires, you have to go above the belt on the battleship. If you shoot the belt or the torpedo belt, and then they're just gonna shatter and not do any damage. And I know it seems kind of scary because usually that belt has a, a, a lot of room for error if you miss. But if you aim above, it's going to increase the chances for you to start those fires. Granted, there's always dispersion and grouping. And honestly, sometimes if you aim for the belt, as long as you aim for the high part of the belt, you can still start fires. But aiming for the enemy's superstructures is really what's going to cause those fires to really start. Now, each ship has the ability to get started by four fires, depending if they have um, like the fire perks that reduces it down to three. And there are two easy fires, which are both caused by shooting the superstructures. And then the front and the rear fires that can start are a little more difficult uh, to, to focus on. So I wouldn't ever try to start those fires unless you knew that you were in a really good position and there was no threat of other enemies pushing you otherwise two fires is more than enough because honestly after two fires you're gonna do so much damage over burn over time along even if they are permanent fires um, that i would try to focus on other ships and burning them before trying to go for the third or fourth fire so Again, another huge advantage of the Yamamoto build along with his perk is if I'm playing close to my teammates, I can now range out to 19 kilometers, 18 kilometers. And it's a very strong play because the arches are gonna be super high and it's gonna allow me to start fires and do damage past normally the battleship range. And now that fleets are here, there's a stronger chance to division up. So if you want your enemies to start raging, just get in two Japanese cruisers, hide behind an island together, and allow one of your destroyers to spot everyone as you're setting everybody on fire. But as you can see, I have the distance on the Iowa that I wouldn't have had it on Makawa. And so if I was a better shot, I'd be able to hit him. And this is a strong thing about 
the Japanese cruisers, they have a long range if need be. They're, they're pretty versatile. And the arches of their shots are very good. Um, not as good as, say, the second tier, um, like the Cleveland of the American section, but for most Russians, they couldn't be able to get over that hump of the island. They'd all hit them. So by keeping your distance, you're going to be able to create advantages for yourself that other country tiers are not going to have the same. Problem. So just going to keep shooting the Boise. Just try to keep firing, angling yourself, making sure there's no way that AP can citadel you. And you're going to be in a pretty good spot. It's kind of hard to show what torpedo effects you can have on this game just because it's, it's a pretty clustered island type of game. and this is where the legendary skill refill station comes in because not only does it increase my range of fire but it also increases my reload abilities so i can do more dpm to the party i would love to see how many people actually use it besides uh, refill station when they use a long range this is also going to show another thing with Yamamoto compared to Makawa. Is with Makawa, I probably could have avoided one torpedo more, so I would have been hit by one instead of two. But taking two is not that bad when four shot you. But maneuverability and kiting is a very strong suit, and that's why um, I prefer that type of build compared to the Yamamoto build. But soon you'll see why the Yamamoto build kind of shines when uh, the enemy cruiser is just kind of giving up on life and they just want to finish the game off. Which also, like, sometimes I prefer uh, when players kind of realize, hey, six on one, I'm not going to be an all-star player, so let's just end it so everyone else can go back and play the game. I feel like sometimes that's true sportsmanship. So the Edinburgh, which has a strong, strong uh, front armor plating, is now pushing from C cap to B. And with Yamamoto's special ability, which is the penetration multiplier, I know I can get a couple shots off on the Edinburgh to get some citadels, which probably wouldn't have been possible with Macau. So there you go, three citadels and the Confederate medal is given. And I'll fire one more time, get another two citadels. And that's just Yamamoto's ability for that penetration multiplier. Whereas for the Macau, I don't think that would have been as easy to get those citadels. I probably would have got a couple, but not as many as five. And that's just the, the trade-off between the two commanders you can choose from. But this, again, this build focuses more on long range and island hiding, whereas the other one focuses on kiting and drawing the enemy away. I end the game with 2,926 XP and three kills. And this type of play is going to get easier as you go up in tier. So it's going to be hard in tier 5, but tier 7 will be a little bit easier just because you have longer distances. But hey, thanks so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. Uh, let me know in the comments if there's things I can improve on, if it's something you want to learn. Um, I really appreciate you guys watching. You guys have a good day. MD Gaming, out.